You're listening to the Home and Outdoor Living Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Garcia, and my goal is to educate you on various home living topics and provide you with actionable steps to take in your projects. If you're a homeowner, you're in the right place. On to today's episode. Today we're here with Paul from Apex Lawn Services, operating out of Kitchener. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Friend of mine was a little bit off the cuff here. I think. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, well, we met uh, basically being in the industry. We were doing our own lawn care up until that point. Right. And then then you had started doing it for us pretty much, I think. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you guys been in business then now? This is our fifth season, fourth year. But prior to that, like I've worked with my parents and stuff in some lawn service. So I worked with them for, for 10 years and last four years, I pretty much ran the company. How long ago was that? That, you were uh, that was, uh, they sold the business in 2000. In 2000. So that was uh, 15, that was prior to the uh, the pesticide ban. Surprisingly enough, uh, the pesticide ban was actually, you know, what helped me get back into the business. Um, so you worked with them till 2000? Yep, yeah, 2000, then I uh, was in construction, industrial, uh, and then got into industrial commercial sales. Um, and then business development for several different national companies, uh, some actually Fortune 500 companies. And uh, last contract ended and I was like, well, hey, um, uh, it just wasn't wasn't any job satisfaction. And then I started asking, mm-hmm. you know, well, hey, so what's, what's my next move? And then uh, I was sitting there thinking, uh, building a pergola in the backyard. Uh, and I realized that I was the happiest when I was out, you know, working on lawns and uh, literally within 24 hours of, you know, coming up and having that thought, I had registered the, you know, the business and was signed up for my exams. Uh, It was literally a whirlwind situation and we have not stopped uh, at all, not even close. Like we're, we doubled our first year uh, sales in year two. Uh, year three, we're up 400%. Last year, we were up 50%. This year, we're doubling our sales again, like it is. Uh, uh, but that, and I attribute that to one, just how we run and operate our business, similar to how you guys, uh, you know, Soros works 100%, you know, guarantee. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're not happy with what we're doing, then, you know, we give you your money back. And we have the tools capable out there, regardless of whether or not there's a, the pesticide ban. We really don't need them. If we do the job properly, and look at the science behind how things operate and how it works. Uh, we do not need pesticides. Uh, there's a judicious uh, use warranted, and there are extreme circumstances in which uh, you know would be preferred method of you know just getting back some control, getting back to a base point. But mm-hmm. really, the the purpose of and what has uh, the foundation of Apex was. Treating the the problem, fixing the problem, not treating the symptom. Uh, and when uh, the decision that uh, one of the deciding factors uh, getting back into it was looking and seeing what others are doing in the industry. And our approach is completely different than what everybody else is doing. We're creating the environment that the grass wants to grow, not simply feeding the grass. Anybody can feed the grass. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, it's about a, a soil food web and about having uh, the correct balance in the soil so that it's constantly producing the nutrients that are required for the grass plant in order to grow. So how does that, how would that benefit the homeowner that's gonna watch this and get a sense for like what you guys do compared to other companies? If you're creating a better environment for the grass, like how does that benefit them? I'd like to think within five years of, you know, using our services, we get to the point where we're drastically diminished how much inputs we actually have to put into it. Uh, and so it's a, re- it's a reduced long, it's a, in the long term, what we're doing is we're fixing the problem. The problem is uh, there's, there's not a natural balance of nutrients within the soil. And when we start putting organic material back in, when we start uh, stimulating the microorganisms that are in the soil, putting carbon and humic acid down, which actually allows the um, soil to release the nutrients gently. Um, so it basically creates uh, a long-term viable soil in which the grass is capable of sustaining itself Mm -hmm. with very little inputs from us. So the longer we work together, the less that we're going to have to do. It's going to save you money, a lot of headaches. So basically you're saying within five years, 
still end up having to spend less, but actually have probably better results at the Absolutely. same time. So Absolutely. probably less weeds, uh, greener grass longer. It's probably greener longer in the summer without Absolutely. water, 100%, right? 100%. Okay. Um, that and even is uh, going one step further, and that's just the soil, but the types of uh, the seeds that are being planted and the types of grasses that are being used within the industry as far as uh, sod production uh, and even putting... Yeah, we, we like Kentucky bluegrass because of the color and the texture and mm. the density that you get from it. But it is it's a, it's a princess grass. It requires yeah. uh, uh, more nitrogen. It requires more water. It doesn't like uh, heat. It doesn't like uh, high temperatures. Insects love it. Disease love it. Like it is just it's a terrible grass. As right. far as I'm concerned, from a home lawn perspective, we want uh, perennial perennial rise and fescues that have a naturally occurring fungus that surface feeding insects like chinch bug and subwood worm they don't like it so we want to plant that grass mm -hmm. and we want to fix the problem again it all goes back to fixing the problem and stop treating the symptoms right so if we're if your arm hurts from doing a particular motion all the time you're well just stop yeah, doing yeah, the stop motion doing right <laughs> you know it just doesn't make sense and i want to we, we really want to get uh, people off the hamster wheel yeah and getting back into the industry and uh, this is the other thing that uh reason why we've seen such exponential growth is because we care. Mm -hmm. Like, I value my time. I value your time. We don't telemarket. We don't, you know, send countless emails. Uh, like, your your email address and your, your phone number, that's for communication purposes. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we give you lots of opportunities and we, we gently, you know, send out notices when we send out invoices. Hey, you know what? This is what our technician noticed. You may want to look at this. We value and respect people's time. And we take that very seriously. I don't want someone calling me at dinner time. Yeah, in you a know, busy and, world that you know how so Well, exactly, attention. and that's the whole point of just, uh, you know, really respecting and delivering results. And at the end of the day, if we can't fix the problem and I'm not happy with the lawn, our technicians aren't happy, if we're not happy with it, how can we possibly expect you to pay? Mm -hmm. We have a 100% money back guarantee. We don't do what we say we're going to do and we can't fix the problem, we will give you your money back. Right. We believe in providing um, honest quality work. We use the best materials that we possibly can. How easy would it be for somebody who potentially has an issue with the service to get a hold of somebody here and have it fixed? We've got nine staff this year. You know, two people answering the phone. We've got emails. You can come into the office. We'd like that. You know, we respond within uh, 24 hours of, uh, of getting any, any, any call or email. Mm -hmm. uh, we respond immediately with it. And within, you know, 48 hours, we're on the property and we will rectify the situation immediately. So I know that sometimes a situation might arise and it looks like one thing's happening, but it's oh. kind of something else. So, so how do you handle that, right? Because that can be difficult sometimes. Uh, that's one of my favorite things, because yeah. uh, no matter what, in, uh, in the lawn business, we get blamed for everything. Yeah, I've seen uh, somebody who's cleaning their windows. So they take out the storm window, they put it on the lawn, and they let it sit there for half an hour. Well, that's like a magnifying glass. So sun's coming down, beams right straight through, and it kills the grass, mm -hmm. And but we get blamed for it. So uh, it, it's funny, and, and, and a lot of stuff like that happens. Uh, there's a lot of disease issues that show mm -hmm. uh, very, very funny. Um, there's no there's no extra charge for us to come out and have a look at the property. There's something that's not right. Like we need to know, like it's not, not it, there, there's never such thing as a complaint. We're on the property at the maximum eight times a year for we'll say, well, not maximum, because uh, with our upper programs, as many times as we've got to come back, mm -hmm. we'll come back. If there's a problem, we fix it. Which programs is that? Uh, that's a platinum program, okay. uh, which is all inclusive, uh, includes, uh, you know, full weed control. Uh, we can control the weeds that are there, mm -hmm. but it covers insects and grub damage. Uh, if there's any damage, you know, we, we automatically come and we repair everything. But on that program, you know, you shouldn't have any problems. Mm -hmm. So if we're on there for 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes for each time we come out, well, you're on your property every single day. If you see something that's not right, we expect a phone call. Like we demand a phone call because like we, we can't fix something if we don't know what the problem sure. is. Some people th seem to think that it's a complaint, but we're in partnership together on. Yeah, it, we're we're in partnership and uh, together on a property. I so find if, that people have an aversion because they don't want to feel like a complainer, but 
and maybe and maybe towards other companies it might be that way but for you and i i think we, we uh, i'm happy see, when people yeah, call like we want to know I, i'm i'm really honestly yeah. like we're, we're, we're happy when people call yeah because we can do something then right we can uh, alleviate, uh, alleviate a concern just over the phone well you know what no that's natural that's okay you know what or hey we should come out and have a look at it mm -hmm. and we have no problems doing that. We like that communication. Hey, we, we get people sending pictures all the time. Hey, um, what's this? You know, can you, can, you sh can you tell me a little bit about it? And we've got a little bit of background information that we can actually respond in kind, or we can book an appointment and come out, or not necessarily an appointment, but um, we can come out and have a look at, uh, look at the property. What advice would you give to a homeowner who's um, maybe looking to hire a lawn care company? It could be the first time, it could be like the 10th time. What advice uh, would you give them when searching for the company that that uh, they want to work with? First and foremost, one, they've obviously got to be licensed and insured in the province. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got to have the proper insurance. They have to have, uh, you know, trained uh, technicians, licensed technicians, licensed staff in order to perform the work. Uh, if they're and why is that? For, cause uh, because because you, you legally can't buy the product. Right. Okay. So then they're doing something illegal. Personally, um, the fines that they have uh, for an accidental discharge of mm -hmm. a pesticide into the environment is not something that I ever want to So what happens if somebody hires an unlicensed applicator and Ministry of Environment comes around, who's going to get in trouble? Everybody. Right. So, I mean, a lot of people don't know that. Like, oh, no. They don't realize if you, for a Ministry of Environment, but they also don't know that if you hired workers who aren't covered under WSIB, then that they would be responsible Absolutely. also. So now they're, they would, in that case, they'd be in That's trouble right. with the Ministry of Labor. Yeah. So. And re really at the end of the day for what, saving a couple dollars, like to hire a professional company. Okay. So one, they've got to, as, as mentioned, they've got to be uh, licensed and insured uh, within the province. Uh, two, they need to be local. We can't be driving in from other regions. Uh, time frame is entirely different. Plus, we're a local company that support local, it's the local economy. Mm -hmm. And that's what, so that's that's another thing. Um, two, they, they need to, you know, physically inspect the property. Like they cannot be given, sure, I can give you a price over the phone, but how can I give you any sort of guarantee or any sort of, like we, it is actually almost law that if you're practicing under the IPM, which is integrated pest management, we have to physically inspect the property. Mm -hmm. We can't assess conditions. We can't tell over the phone how many weeds you have, how many applications that we're going to have to do, what's the soil soil like what's the uh the condition of the lawn like we need to know the condition before we can make recommendations we can't right. just come blanket come out and just make an application and expect it to be a be all and catch all so, so you could probably have a conversation about the programs and what their intended applications are right because there's gonna be a difference from the bottom program which is more Absolutely. of a, a maintenance thing right. compared to the the platinum which is more of like a full encompassing thing right and and that full encompassing um, program is and the way our programs are designed is that we 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 use them from the top down so depending on the condition of your property there's a lot of insect activity and, and a lot of weeds, and we're gonna go on to the, the platinum program to get everything under control. And as we get them under control, we're gonna step back the, the services that are required. I don't waste my money. I'm sure not gonna waste your money or any of our clients' money. Like it's just, uh, it's about value. Uh, and, and creating and again, fixing the problem. So if your lawn's in a fantastic condition, well then we don't need to be there eight times. Right. What would be the, the number one tip that the homeowner should probably execute on? The, the most important number one tip and tell people this until I'm literally blue in the face and I have arguments with you and I know we've had conversations yeah. about this. Raise your lawnmower up. Yeah. Raise your lawnmower up. Three and a half inches, absolute bare minimum mowing height. Yeah. Has to be long grass. If you think of the grass plant and the leaf as a factory and the root zone is the supply chain for that factory. The larger the leaf blade, the larger the root zone. The larger the root zone, the larger the plant in general. If you've got a bumpy lawn, raise your lawn more up. You have bare spots and a lot of weeds, raise your lawn more up. It cools the soil, you've got deeper root system, uh, the, the grass plant can be efficient. Anything over three and a half or four inches uh, is, is, you get into problematic and you end up running into some disease issues. But three and a half inches, is the optimum height to, mm -hmm. to be mowing your grass. Mm -hmm. 
Next thing, watering. And how to water? You want deep and frequent waterings. I want to work with uh, some irrigation companies this year and try to try to manage the water better because deep and frequent waterings does not mean half an hour per zone or an hour per zone once a week because that's just not enough water. You've got to be getting at least an inch of water down into the soil because you got to remember when the water comes in, as it dries, the roots will grow down and chase after the water. Mm -hmm. So it's deep infrequent waterings. Uh, literally, I, I like to recommend just taking a, no, no sprinkler, unless you have a soaker hose, then you can use a soaker hose or just take your take your garden hose, drop it onto the lawn, turn it on halfway, let it run until the soil is soft and squishy. That mm -hmm. could be an hour, depending on how dry it is. If you water to a good depth and you move that consistently, you're going to go two and a half, three weeks before you have to water again, if you want. And usually you're going to run into, we've, we've very rarely seen six weeks without rain in a row. Yeah. Well, especially lately. Right. We're getting rain all the time. Yeah. So what what's one interesting fact about your business that people might not know about? Well, one that uh, I grew up in the industry and from the time I was five years old, um, actually, my father and uh, was the one of the founding board members for the Lens, uh, Landscape Ontario, right. uh, the Waterloo chapter. Mm -hmm. So I've grown up in the industry from the time I was five years old. Other interesting uh, and, and direction that we're going is, uh, again, you know, our approach to fixing the lawn is and fixing the soil problem mm -hmm. is a much larger problem and it uh, stems right straight into the agricultural industry as well because we're you know artificially sustaining plants right. and it actually leads to an overuse of nitrogen uh, creates growth and it also stimulates microorganisms into the soil and they actually devour all of the organic material in the soil and it basically leads to desertification so what would you say to a homeowner that they say oh, yeah i hired a lawn care service before and it didn't do anything i would say that they didn't do the job properly Point blank, period. Mm -hmm. We get control. We, we manage weeds very effectively. Right. And we get results because we do the job the way it's supposed to be done. Specifically with the, uh, the weed applications, we have to do two applications within a two to three week time window. No more than four weeks. If we miss that opportunity, the first application knocks them down. The second application knocks them out. We have to hit that second application. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're just literally, you're just spraying the same weed over and over and over again. Because mm -hmm. it's just the, the iron, uh, the grass plant can metabolize the iron. Specific weeds cannot. And it literally just, uh, their cell structure can't handle the extra application of iron. So they literally and wilt die. and disintegrate and they, and they die off. The, the leaves will die off, but there's still the, the tap root. And that's generally why we, we get the control that we do. We have more trucks in the spring than what we actually need for the entire season, just right. so that we can manage that short time window. Because it's really tight. Very like, tight. Like spring is chaos. Very, very tight. Mm -hmm. And we want to time that application with uh, the actual flowers uh, and the burst of flowers. Mm -hmm. Because if we can get there before they actually pop or, or while they're still in flower and yellow and we actually interrupt that flowering cycle and that's when the plant's actually the weakest because it's taking all of its energy and it's pushing it into right. flowering mm -hmm. so the plant's very weak to begin with and when we come in and make an application at that that point in time well we're literally frying off the the leaves is what basically happens and then once they're gone well now the plant has to regrow its leaves so it's stopping production uh going in towards the the flower and uh, specifically the dandelion head and then once that happens, well, the new leaves have to come back out again. And then that's when we come and we, we hit it again. What would you say to somebody to, you know, might be skeptical or they maybe been dealing with another lawn care provider and maybe not getting the results that they want. But ultimately, what would you say to somebody that would give you guys a shot? 100% money back guarantee. And that's not the application. We get through the season and, you're, and we're not happy with uh, the change in the condition of the property and mm -hmm. it hasn't improved dramatically. We'll, we'll give you your money back. Okay. Pretty self-explanatory. That's how much belief I have in what we're doing. We wouldn't offer that. We'd be crazy to. Mm -hmm. Why do you think nobody else is offering 100% money back guarantee? It's not just the <laughs> yeah. last application. It's the whole bloody program. Yeah. yeah. Right? And again, like if we if we can't get control and if we can't manage it, we can't do what we say we're going to do. Well, then what, what good is our word? 
we deliver results. And we're holding ourselves accountable to what we say we're going to do. Mm-hmm. So in your, let's say your lifelong career, what was, because you did some construction, some lawn care, what was the favorite, your favorite project or like uh, task that you worked on? Uh, you know what? Uh, every single one of them comes back to the exact same thing. And it's just uh, people. You know, I just love the interaction and getting to know different people more. Everybody's so unique and everybody has their own talents and attributes on who they are as, as people. Mm-hmm. But that's the number one thing that I, I honestly have to say is, you know, the most important aspect of my life is the people that are in it. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, just trying to be as positive and helpful as we possibly, as I can, and even the company, like, and who we hire um, and who we bring on uh, with staff. Like, we, we work together. They're not just employees. Like, their family's yeah. my family. Like, we really, like, we take care of each other. And that's probably, you know, the largest single most important thing with with even Apex uh, and just how we operate in the culture that we have. I've often wondered, you know, well, can you have a large company with still that small family feel? And, and absolutely you can. Um, I was in Costa Rica uh, a couple of years ago when, when we were leaving. Uh, it was a WestJet flight and we're being pushed out. Basically, we're taxiing out. And the ground crew's walking out back from the terminal, out to the approach, and they unfurl a banner, and they all start, you know, waving, waving goodbye. Hmm. And and that for me was uh, was really important um, as far as uh, our, our company and our corporate culture and who we are as people is that mm-hmm. we all have that same belief, you know, like hey, thank you very much, and and we work together. There's no levels of management because we're all equally responsible for what we're responsible for right i'm i'm no more important than you know a technician that's out there and is if if you really want to get down to it he's the most important person in the company yeah bar none without a doubt he's the front line he's the guy that's delivering the services we pay our employees really well because we expect them to excel at what they do yeah and we want them to excel at that but yeah people are you know the number one most important thing that uh, has been you know, right straight through uh, all of my varied career. What's, what's the most important, uh, most important part of your job? Being a being a leader and, and inspiring and making sure that we're all working at our at our optimum mm-hmm. and providing our, our optimum. But my, my more, most important, I got mouths to feed. Like yeah. We got we got families that we're taking care of here, and I we take I take that very serious, mm-hmm. and just making sure that they're comfortable. If somebody's, you know, doing a job and, you know, they're really kind of not in, not into it, well, hey, you know, we'll find somebody else to do that. You know, here, you're really good at this. So let's move you over here. Mm-hmm. You know, an understanding. I mean, that's, but that's my, my, I would think my most important thing is just, you know, understanding of, you know, our clients' needs, our uh, employees' needs, uh, um, our needs, and just making sure that we're, we're hitting all of those points. So to give a better sense of, of who you are to people... I have a couple like random questions. <laughs> so I'm sure these will be good. <laughs> <laughs> if you have some, you can add to it. But yeah. uh, who's the who's the most famous person you've met? Uh, besides you? Yeah, besides me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really, for me, I mean, it's just if you know, let's say, who would I really like to meet? Barack Obama. That guy. Yeah, he's Barack. just the, he's just the coolest dude. He just seems like a great guy. Uh, that and I'd like to, uh, you know, I'd like to have dinner with Prince Harry. I think that'd be... Uh, Interesting. He's just a, it seems to be a real down-to-earth as a prince can be, I guess. But <laughs> but no, I don't hold anybody in, uh, in higher meet, regard because everybody... Uh, but you've met some people. Oh, I'm Didn't sure. Didn't you meet, uh, you met a country singer recently? Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah Meg, Meg, Meg and Patrick, yeah, yeah. When we were actually down, uh, down uh, surfing in Costa Rica, yeah. So uh, if, if, if you were a doctor, what kind of doctor would you be? What would you specialize in? <laughs> it's funny. I was just in uh, Calgary, uh, actually in Banff, we were skiing and uh, ski buddy thing where they actually have uh, a mountain guide. And then you basically a whole bunch of people get together. And one of the guys uh, that we were skiing with was actually a med student. So that actually came up in, uh, in conversation. Probably an op- ophthalmologist. Okay. Thinking the the vision, being able to see would probably be, and helping someone, you know, maintain their their eyesight would be. I've seen so many beautiful things. 
on top of a mountain looking around and seeing a sea of mountains. Yeah. Is, yeah, it's something wonderful. It's it's amazing. And our country is so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, actually, interesting. I'll have to, to show you this picture. But uh, we were at uh, Chateau uh, Lake Louise. Uh, we just came in. Uh, it was way too rich for our blood. But we came in and uh, we're standing there. And we walked through the lobby, came out into the back. And I started doing a panoramic shot. And uh, I had just finished the shot. And all of a sudden, we heard this loud boom. And it wasn't until we got home and I thought they were blowing uh, avalanche or something like that. Um, one of the mountains somewhere in, in the area. And as it turns out, I go in and I zoom into the, this one big picture and I actually caught an avalanche coming down off of the glacier in the back. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> but see, seeing that, uh, you know, being able to share that with, uh, with somebody and, you know, allowing them to, um, to see that, uh, that. Uh, and if it wasn't that, then osteo, uh, an osteopath or uh, oh, yeah. basically yeah. Um, being able to walk. I've been, uh, no, just a, uh, orthopedics. Oh, Sorry, orthopedics. Orthopedics, yeah. You know, I've been blessed with, you know, good health and well, my back was bad for a while. But mm -hmm. being blessed with that and being able to help someone else, you know, get up in their mobility. Those, those two things would be probably the... If I, if I was a doctor. But, yeah. So if you had to have a last meal, what would, what would you pick? <laughs> pizza. Pizza? What kind I, of pizza? I just love pizza. It doesn't matter <laughs> what any kind of pizza? you can put anything on Even it. like the gourmet pizzas with barbecue sauce and yeah, chicken on you know, it. Not kinds so of. much. Uh, I mean, I'm general more of a, an authentic. The uh, classic stuff. Yeah. You know, fresh basil, uh, you know, some... Some fresh mozzarella and you know just a simple marinara sauce. Uh, so the you know, Italian, very, Italian very yeah, very very uh, yeah, rustic, authentic uh, Italian pizza would be yeah, you know, uh, one of my one of my things, one of my favorites. Uh, that or uh, and sushi, you never get enough sushi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you touched on it, but what was your very first job? Oh, very first job, newspaper. Newspaper. Yeah, okay. I was a newspaper boy. Yeah. How old were you when you did that? Uh, I think it was. It was grade five, so it would have been uh, 10, yeah. 10 years old. Oh, man. That was, uh, that was a job and a half. There's times like I hated Wednesdays because they had flyers. And I literally, I was I was a scrawny kid. Like, I was small until I was, oh, I'm still not big. But, like, I know the newspaper bags weighed more than what I did. Yeah. And uh, I remember walking down. Actually, and this was, uh, I, was I was telling this, uh, this story when I was in uh, Calgary to a buddy that I was traveling with. And I only mentioned it because we saw these shoes. And I remember walking was the first winter that I had the, the newspaper route. And there was this one property and the water just seeped out. And there was always ice there. Mm. And I just, and I flew up and I had these paper bags and I landed flat on my back. And I remember saying to my grandfather, who uh, used to wear goulashes or toe rubbers all the time, I said, well, why don't they put spikes in the bottom of those, you know, so that you can put them on over top of your, your boots and then you don't slip. Yeah. And that was the first product that I ever came up with uh, as far as an invention is concerned, you know, something novel. And he said, oh, why would they do that? Well, then your shoes would get wet. <laughs> And now you see them everywhere. Yeah. But that was that was my first job. Yeah, and I actually enjoyed that. Tell me I should have to save money and appreciate, you know, what, what work is. Yeah. Who has had the biggest influence on your life? Well, he's easy. easy. Uh, you know, my parents, mm -hmm. for sure. You know, I, I tell my dad that uh, I say to him now, you know, we don't appreciate them, you know, until we're, you know, much older. But, yeah. uh, you know, I said, well, you, you taught me everything I know. And... They, he started a lawn service business, uh, but you know, I was a, a little, just a little guy, like eight years older, and I remember him taking me to uh, to a shop sorting nuts and bolts, and just construction and asking why, and just and and being inquisitive and and curious, and that's kind of how you know the business has evolved and got to the point that it is. Well, I grew mm -hmm. up with you know in the business, I mm -hmm. and I knew that and I understood that and. Uh, I had models. I, you know, always tinkered with things. I mean, they would give me a gift for uh, for my birthday or Christmas and say, "Okay, now you have to promise not to take this apart." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was his, uh, it was his, his mind, and uh, that actually got me to, you know, tinkering with things right. and and playing with stuff. You know, he was uh, he worked in construction, and then he started a lawn service business. Kind of the rest is history. So I've always been exposed to to tinkering and. Uh, and just questioning why stuff happens. So. Yeah. Favorite place in the world? 
Anywhere my so my home. daughters and I, yeah, home, wherever we are, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm pretty pretty mobile in yeah. that regard. But uh, favorite place though, uh, all honesty, uh, water uh, for sure. Anywhere so, near water. Anywhere near water, uh, the ocean, mind you, I don't like deep water and, you know, anything bigger than me or even <laughs> close to my size in the water, man, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. There's no way. There's no way. If you, if you could travel anywhere, where would you go? Well, being an inquisitive guy uh, and, and appreciating food and culture uh, as much as what I do, I really want to go back to, uh, I want to go to England. Uh, my mom's side of the family is... Uh, English from Wales. My father's from uh, family was from the western part of uh, Ukraine. Also, at that point in time, it was called uh, Galicia. But I want to go back and you know explore my roots there. But other than that, I mean, anywhere where there's good food, sunshine, water, yeah, pretty much. So you mentioned favorite food is basically pizza, right? You well, you said if it, was, it was my last meal. Oh, okay. So, know, so if you had to pick a favorite food, what, what what would it be? Ah, oh, man, it's, it's really hard. I love soup. Okay. Soup's heart and soul in a bowl. So pretty much, uh, I really like making soups. Uh, I love cooking. Uh, absolutely love cooking, actually, in a men's cooking club. Cook with uh, at uh, Conestoga College, and we're actually raising funds for bursaries and scholarships, mm-hmm. uh, trying to give uh, a helping hand to those that need it. Uh, and we're expanding, uh, expanding on that option as well, um, you know, getting out into to the soup kitchen and giving back. And mm-hmm. um, I believe in that, so... But yeah, yeah, no, I've I've eaten can of cold cold beans <laughs> all the way from I, I I can't order prime rib anywhere anymore because uh, I just I'm sorry I just make it better than anybody. So, uh, <laughs> so if you had to pick a, a your favorite or best restaurant in, in uh, KW, where, oh, I know you you go to a lot of different places. I mean, every time I call you, <laughs> what you, you tell me some place <laughs> I'd never even heard of, and yeah, I lived here my whole life. Yeah, no, no, I I, I love to eat. I love I love good food. Without a doubt, and it's uh, a little bit pricey, but there's a there's easy ways of getting around that. Uh, Langdon Hall, for sure, without Langdon a doubt. Langdon Hall, okay. Pretty much the top restaurant in Canada, without a doubt. The main dining room, yeah, it's really expensive, but if you actually go into the bar, they've got a little pub in there, Wilkes Pub. It's a hamburger, hands down the best hamburger I've ever had. Huh. Other than that, uh, but on a more, um, but like $20 for a hamburger. You can have a hamburger and a meal and like two people can go in for, you know, well under $100 and you are getting like one of the best meals that you will have. Uh, so it's really, really good. Constable College, uh, Bloom Restaurant. Um, it's run by the students. Does uh, it uh, open at a certain time, right? Lunch time? Uh, yeah, lunch. Uh, you just got to check uh, their website, um, Bloom. Um, they're coming to the end of their season, so they're not open over the summer. But uh, right. definitely during the semesters, like it is by far the best meal. Uh, recently eaten at the University Club, uh, University of Waterloo. We, we've got to go there. University uh, Club? Yeah, it's actually open to the public. Um, it's inside the university? Yep. Yeah, it's inside the university. Fantastic chef. Really, really, really. It's one of the best uh, kept secrets there. Hmm. But they're only open lunch, 11 to 3. But yeah. uh, it's really good. There's actually a lot of really good restaurants in town. I kind of struggle. But graffiti <laughs> restaurants, really good. I can't wait for that uh, Cider House to open up. And yeah, see, yeah, I don't know any of these places. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and again, uh, well, because of the cooking club, I've, you know, we've had the opportunity of cooking with a bunch of different chefs. Right. Having that experience, we like to, I like to go to their restaurants. Right. Um, but there's a lot of really, really talented chefs. Actually, Rich Uncle Tavern, um, Benjamin Lilico, Chef Benjamin Lilico, uh, the head chef there. Absolutely brilliant chef. One of, the, one of the best chefs in the region and uh, within the next. How about you, in his career, he will be actually one of the top chefs in the world, hmm. without a doubt. He's won awards over in, uh, in Europe. He's the kid's like 23, 24 years old and absolute brilliant, brilliant in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah really good. So that, that's all the fun questions that I have. Do you have any last words for people who are going to watch this? No, not really. Just if you're looking for lawn services, uh, there's a lot of good options out there. Um, we're not the only ones that are out there, um, but you got to make sure that uh, they're doing the job right. Yeah. Um, that's number one thing. And again, raise your lawnmower up. <laughs> raise your lawnmower up. Three and a half <laughs> raise inches. your lawnmower. So, so it, a lot of the homeowner lawnmowers, the consumer, they don't have measurements on the notches on the wheels. So how would you suggest raise somebody? it as, as high as it'll possibly go? So just go to right to the highest, right to the top. Yeah. Right to the top, and then if it starts falling over, we'll then start cutting it down. 
start moving it down one notch, but as high as you possibly can. Uh, it's the best thing you can do for your grass. Uh, it'll keep the soil cool. You'll have mm -hmm. less weeds, less insects, uh, less problems all the way around. It's the number one free, cheap, easiest thing you can possibly do. Everybody mows their grass way too short. Yeah. That's yeah. why there's so many problems too. So yeah. it's the easiest thing. So that's the number one thing. Raise your lawnmower. <laughs> right on. Well, hey, thanks, Paul. Greatly appreciate the opportunity. And uh, if you guys have any other questions, you can reach out to Paul. Uh, what's your website and your phone number? Uh, Apexlawn.ca. Uh, phone number is 519-502-2697. Uh, we service Kitchen Waterloo, Cambridge, Guelph, surrounding areas. More than happy to give you a hand. Awesome. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you guys again soon. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you found value in this episode, you can support us for free by subscribing, rating, and reviewing this podcast. See you next time.